The Women Covered It team has done the nation proud by bagging the first medal for Nepal at the ongoing 19th Asian Games in Hangzhou, China. This incidentally is going to be the country's only medal at the Mega Games that concludes in two days' time on Sunday. There is nothing to write home about Nepal's performance, which has for one more time triggered debate whether participation should only be done for participation's sake or there should be a sense of competition as well. Not forgetting that the country's poor sports infrastructure has not helped the cause of our athletes, the Himalayan nation has a long way to go as far as their stake on medals are concerned. Good evening, I'm Sarah Sapsanama. Let's begin with the headlines of the hour. The discussion on the bill on community school education begins at the House of Representatives. Lawmakers urge to move ahead by addressing the issues of stakeholders. The detention hearing on behalf of the defendants in the 60 kilogram gold scandal ends. Government attorney present their arguments, a verdict likely today. Nobel Peace Prize awarded to jailed Iranian activist Nargis Mohammadi for her fight against the oppression of women in Iran and women's freedom. And Pakistan posts a victory target of 287 runs at the ICC World Cup against Netherlands. Rizwan and Shakil do the repair work with the bat. Basti lead claims four wickets. Parliamentarians have urged the government to proceed with the school education bill by ensuring that the demands of stakeholders are addressed. Attending the House of Representatives session today that discussed on the principles of the bill, lawmakers urged the government in against endorsing the bill for mere formality. CPN Maui Centre lawmaker Janardhan Sharma called on the government to provide time to mull over the provisions of the proposed bill, saying that many clauses were against the sentiments of the constitution. Likewise, Chief Whip of Nepali Congress, Ramesh Likhak, said the bill should only move ahead by considering the concerns of stakeholders. Zanata Samadzwadi Party lawmaker Pradeep Yadav opined the education bill was a sensitive issue and that the bill should be redrafted, raising question if the bill had been formed to favour private schools. Ahead of the session, during the zero hour, many lawmakers urged the government for market intervention, saying that inflation and black market had reached its peak ahead of Dashai Festival. UML lawmaker Raghuji Panta addressed the session with a sarcastic poem, urging the government to curb market inflation. On a different note, Rashtra Prasadhandra Party Chair Rajendra Lingden questioned the legitimacy of the claims that former King Ganendra Shah's remarks had hurt the country's democracy. In response, Maui Centre lawmaker Leknath Dahal criticised the use of the word king and urged the word be removed from a session records. The detention hearing on behalf of the 26 defendants in the 60 kilogram gold scam has concluded earlier today. The hearing took place in the single bench of Kathmandu District Court Judge Madhav Prasad Mainali. Following this, the government attorney have pleaded in the case. Three government lawyers, including District Attorney Janak Prasad Khimire, have presented their arguments. A verdict by the district court on whether to release the defendants on bail or keep them under judicial custody during their investigation is expected today. A case has been filed against 29 alleged culprits, including nine foreign nationals, in the just over 60 kilogram gold smuggled from Hong Kong. 26 of the alleged culprits are in the judicial custody of Nepal police. The Revenue Investigation Department had confiscated the smuggled gold on the night of 10, 18th of July, just over two months ago. The Central Investigation Bureau of Nepal Police had taken over the probe and filed a case against the alleged culprits on 17th of September last month. Following the process of recording the statements of the defendants, the detention hearing that started from 27th of September last Wednesday had continued for 10 days till today. Now, in the face of latest communal conflicts in the country, former President Vidya Devi Bhandari has urged all members of public to act responsibly and exercise restraint. Issuing a public message, the former president said that a few incidents had threatened the age-old harmony between communities, giving way to serious questions on religious tolerance. Bhandari also said there were forces active in disseminating false information to incite violence and appeal for unity and awareness. Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal reads Bajhang in the Sudur Pashtim province to take stock of the damages caused by the recent earthquake. The Premier had reached to the district on a Nepal Army helicopter. 
Earlier in the morning, Sudar Pashtim Chief Minister Kamal Bahadur Shah had reached the district in connection with the distribution of relief assistance. Various organizations and private individuals have also distributed relief items to those affected by the recent earthquake. Those who lost their homes to the earthquake have received tarpaulins, food and clothes. Various political parties and their sister organizations have also distributed tarpaulins and rice, among others in the province's headquarters, Chainpur, Bungal and Durgathali. Local residents in the earthquake hit region have been living in temporary adjustments as aftershocks continue. Various student unions have padlocked the office of the Trivun University Service Commission demanding for scrapping of disputed evaluation. This has affected the interview process of lecturers and assistant lecturers. According to Admin Officer Kedar Dhakal, the interviews of candidates who clear the exams had been scheduled but has been affected due to the protest. The student union have issued a notice saying that the Service Commission Chair Ghanasham Bhattarai and member Himraj Dhakal had been barred from entering the university premises. The 17th Zonta International District Conference has started from today in Kathmandu. The convention aims at the empowerment of women, curb cases of gender violence and also discuss the issues of climate change. There is participation of representatives from over 150 nations, including India, Pakistan, New Zealand, Sri Lanka and host Nepal, among others, in the 17th Zonta International District Conference. Zonta has said that the convention will focus on women empowerment, aim at re reducing cases of gender violence and raise a general awareness regarding climate change. The Minister for Women, Children and Senior Citizens, Surendra Acharya, inaugurated the three-day convention. Moving on, the Teachers Service Commission has published the result of secondary level teachers' license examination. Of the 49,170 that appeared in the examination held on 9th of September last month, 24,248 have cleared the test. The commission has said the highest number, 6,542 out of 12,293 have cleared the test in Bagmati province, while the lowest was in Madhesh province with 2,504 out of 7,192 that had appeared. Likewise, in Sudur Pashim province, 2,756 cleared the tests, 2,299 in Karnali province, 4,113 in Lumbini, 2,254 in Gandaki and 3,819 in Koshi province. It's time now for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. The question is, what's your take on the failure to implement the government decision even inside the administrative hub, Singh Darwar? Your options are A, influence of middlemen, B, poor monitoring, and C, random decision. The voting is on. Type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. Time now for the international update. Iranian women's rights campaigner Nargis Mohammadi has been awarded the Nobel Prize, Peace Prize. Mohammadi is the 19th woman to win the Nobel Peacemakers Prize. She was honored for her fight against the oppression of women in Iran and a fight to promote human rights and freedom for all. Authorities arrested Mohammadi in November after she attended a memorial for a victim of violent 2019 protests. But she has a long history of imprisonment, harsh sentences and international calls for reviews of her case. The 51-year-old is currently jailed in the Evan prison in Tehran, serving multiple sentences amounting to 12 years, most recently for spreading anti-state propaganda and given 154 lashes as a result of the decision. In 2022, she was only tried for five minutes before being given a sentence of eight years and 70 lashes. Following the Masa Amini protests in Iran, Mohammadi has continued to report her experience of abuse as a woman in Evin prison. Recovery work was underway today after a glacier lake burst its banks and triggered flash floods this week in the Indian Himalayas, killing at least 40 people. The Lonak Lake in the mountainous Sikkim state overflowed on Wednesday, causing major flooding that authorities said had impacted the lives of 22,000 people. It is the latest deadly weather event in South Asia's mountains being blamed on climate change. The Indian Army said it is planning to evacuate nearly 1,500 stranded tourists using helicopters as weather in the region improves.
Poland's Prime Minister has said his country rejected what he said was a European Union plan to accept illegal migrants and punish members who refused to cooperate as he arrived for a summit of the bloc in Spain today. Under an agreement reached by EU members envoys on Wednesday this week, countries that receive many migrants crossing the Mediterranean in small boats such as Italy could speed up asylum procedures and ask for swift help from EU peers, including financial aid and relocations. The 27 countries will now negotiate further with the European Parliament. They hope to have a functioning migration system in place ahead of a 2024 European Parliament election that takes place across the union of some 450 million people. Warsaw refuses to host new arrivals from the Middle East and Africa, although Poland has given shelter to several million Ukrainians who fled Russia's invasion. Other Central and Eastern EU countries have also put up border controls inside what is normally a zone of open travel, citing the need to crack down on people smugglers and migrants who avoid regular border crossing and arrival procedures. Meanwhile, Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban slammed the EU's handling of immigration and enlargement as the 27-member bloc's leaders arrived in Granada for an informal summit. Orban said the EU pushed through with its migration proposal, although Hungary and Poland were not satisfied with it. Asked about Georgia's candidacy to join the EU, Orban deemed it to be enlargement fatigue and called the leaders selfish. Estonian Prime Minister Kaya Kallas said that although her country supports all candidacies to join the EU, nobody is expected to have any discounts in this regard. Russian President Vladimir Putin turns 71 tomorrow with his special military operation in Ukraine grinding on into its 19th month and Russian presidential elections around the corner in 2024. The Russian leader may soon indicate he will take part in the 2024 vote, paving the way for the Kremlin chief to stay in power until 2030. Putin, who was handed the presidency by Boris Yeltsin, on the last day of 1999, has been leader for longer than any other Russian ruler since Joseph Stalin, beating even Leonid Brezhnev's 18-year tenure. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said last month that if Putin decided to run, then no one would be able to compete with him. While Putin may face no competition for votes, the former KGB spy faces the most serious set of challenges any Kremlin chief has faced since Mikhail Gorbachev grappled with the crumbling Soviet Union nearly four decades ago. The special military operation in Ukraine has triggered the biggest confrontation with the West since the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis and the biggest external shock to the Russian economy in decades. Putin faced a failed mutiny by Russia's most powerful mercenary, Yevgeny Prigozhin, in June, who was killed in a plane crash two months later. The West cast Putin as a war criminal and a dictator who has led Russia into an imperial-style conflict that has weakened the country and forced Ukrainian statehood while uniting the West and handing NATO a post-Soviet mission of opposing Russia. Putin, though, presents the war as part of a much bigger struggle with the U.S., which the Kremlin elite says aims to cleave Russia apart, grab its natural resources and then turn to settling scores with China. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has said Europe has to support the U.S. during a tough period. A dispute among the Republican majority in the U.S. House of Representatives has complicated budget negotiations and prompted President Joe Biden, a Democrat, to go from confidence that a deal will be made on Ukraine aid to openly expressing concerns. Zelensky, speaking to media on the sidelines of a summit of the European political community in Spain, said the situation with the U.S. is dangerous, but Ukraine is ready for any tough period. The European yes. political community was established last year following Russia's invasion of Ukraine to foster cooperation among more than 40 countries from Norway to Moldova. Chile is up in arms after being left out of the plans for the 2030 World Cup, even though neighbors Argentina, Uruguay and Paraguay were picked to host the opening matches. The news dominated headlines, street conversations and social media platforms, even drawing comments from President Gabriel Boric. 
Chile had made a joint bid alongside Argentina, Uruguay and Paraguay in February to host the 2030 World Cup, but was the only one of those countries not to receive a game after FIFA announced the host nations on Wednesday. Spain, Portugal and Morocco, who also launched a joint bid, will stage the majority of the tournament and the South American countries will host one game each. Each of the six nations will automatically qualify for the World Cup. That is all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.